something really big just happened yesterday on a macro perspective, and it's very good news for SoFi, but it seems the market is taking it in a more negative or mixed perception. And I wanted to hop on this video to talk about the news and also clear up some of that perception in terms of what I'm seeing for SoFi over the next several months. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so first things first, I haven't made many SoFi videos over the past couple of weeks, and that's partially due to just other commitments and also partially due to the fact that SoFi hasn't had a lot of news. Generally with SoFi covering the stock for the past three, four years, we'll go through periods of time when there's not a lot of news, not a lot of things to talk about. It's more so executing on a consistent basis. And then we'll have one or two weeks where we have three or four or five announcements all at the same time. And so right now we're just in a period where there doesn't seem to be too much going on. However, yesterday we had a massive downward revision the Bureau of Labor Statistics released revisions with payrolls down 818,000 versus negative 187,000 prior. And this is the biggest revision since 2009. So essentially, we have over a decade where we haven't had a revision this large. And it's especially relevant because we're months away from an election. Preliminary estimates of non-farm payroll benchmark revision would cut March 2024 level of employment by 818,000 or 0.5%. So there's a couple of pieces here. I mean, number one is a general distrust in the data overall when you have massive revisions like this, especially in the importance that the data plays from a macro perspective because so many names are algorithmically traded or are traded into buckets with other names. And the macro seemingly is more important today than it was maybe five or 10 years ago, given where we are, especially with the rate environment. And so that's the first point that I want to make this general distrust in the institutions or from a macro perspective. And it sort of waters down the importance of these macro numbers when you have massive revisions like this so close to large events like a political election. The second point that I want to make is that yesterday on Wednesday, the market actually traded higher. So why did actually stocks trade higher when you had this news? Well, simply put, because it paints a darker picture of the economy than what was previously thought. And that is going to force the Fed's hand to have a rate cut in September. We know that a rate cut in September is basically priced in at this point. It's 100% likelihood of happening. The only outstanding question now is that there is a growing popularity for 50 basis point rate cut as opposed to a 25 basis point rate cut. And I think a lot of the debate right now centers around this two points. So is it going to be 50 or is it going to be 25 basis points? I think the revision yesterday pushes the Fed closer to talking about a 50 basis point hike. And the reason why in the beginning of this video, I said this is good news for SoFi is because we know that SoFi is going to benefit from rate cuts. And look, I know the market from a macro perspective is only partially indicative of how SoFi is going to perform because SoFi as a fundamental business has to execute. But right now we're at a time where there's a lot of uncertainty and the market generally is in a fear territory, right? We have election uncertainty as to who's going to win and what those policies are going to be. We have the policies actually coming out and the fear mongering associated with them. I mean, this unrealized capital gains taxes has the ability to just cripple the market, right? Because people are going to have to sell stock to uh, essentially pay off those taxes. We have geopolitics, what might happen across the world and, you know, that uncertainty overall. And so there's a lot that the market is hesitant about or uncertain about and as a result, fearful on. However, rate cuts is almost like that light at the end of the tunnel, because if the Fed cuts rates, especially by 50 basis points, not only will SoFi benefit, but small caps in general will benefit. I saw Tom Lee yesterday, and I mean, we talked about this on the Bootleg Weekly podcast on Tuesday. He was on CNBC and he was talking about the Russell 2000, how it would perform if the market were to go more risk on. For small caps to rise 40 percent means that the P.E., the median Russell 2000 stock goes from 10 times to 14 times. So it's not asking the market to provide some magic and a huge revaluation. It's actually just saying small cap stocks, which have been left for dead largely because the Fed's been tight for almost two years, as they start to normalize policy and as mergers pick up, you know, it's merger activity has been accelerating this year and it, it should really strengthen because it's a sign of CEO confidence. All of these flow through to benefit small cap stocks. And it's not like smaller companies are growing slower. I know people post all these stats about small caps losing money. It's mainly because of the biotech components 
basically don't make money, and that's the largest uh, cohort of stocks in the Russell. But the Russell 2000 median earnings growth is almost 700 basis points faster than the S&P, and top line growth growth is almost 400 basis points. So you're getting better growth, lower valuation, and I think the catalyst is now when the market is convinced the Fed is embarking on a rate cutting cycle. And we know that Russell has underperformed all the under indices. So number one, there's a lot of room to run. But at this point, it sounds very unbelievable for the Russell to do the type of move that Tom Lee is talking about. But we know that he's been right before multiple times. And the other thing to support this is that as a result of rates being so high, there's so much money sitting on the sidelines, just earning a passive percentage. And as rates start to fall, that money will start to flow back into equities because there's a better ROI in equities. And there's like $6 trillion or something to that effect in money markets right now. And so when that obviously goes into the market and the market goes more risk on due to a lower rate environment, then it's cheaper to borrow. And we know as these money market funds flow back in and as it becomes cheaper to borrow and as rates come down and as small caps rise as a result, this is going to be the rising tide that raises all ships of which SoFi is one of. So SoFi not only will benefit because it is a small cap and in a risk on environment, small caps generally have a higher premium, but they're also going to benefit fundamentally from rate cuts because of the business that they're in. You know, I expect SoFi to be rising on this news, but ironically, yesterday it sold off. And the reason why I fundamentally expect SoFi to be rising on the announcement of rate cuts, or at least in anticipation of rate cuts, is because over the past two years, we've been in a high rate environment. Personal loans, in that case, are the main catalyst, the main driver of SoFi's profitability and their revenue. They're the main areas of where SoFi makes money in a high rate environment and also from an origination's point of view. I mean, over the past two years, it's been like an 80-20 split between personal loans and everything else, right? But if you look before that in lower rate environments, it's more even split. And to the point where, I mean, in 2019, SoFi was known predominantly as a student lender, right? This was before the moratorium. And, and now that the moratorium is over and as rates are going to fall, that is going to become more and more the talk track for SoFi from a lending perspective. In a rate cut environment, student loans and home loans are going to benefit. You're going to see originations in student loans and in home loans skyrocket while personal loans stay flat and definitely as a percentage of the total originations fall. So SoFi really has a massive tailwind here going into 2025 as we know that the rate cuts being announced in September or in the fall, essentially, are not going to be affecting the business until 2025. But we know that the market is forward looking. And so a lot of people are going to try to front run this news. And I mean, just look at the stock reaction that we're having in companies like Redfin, right? Redfin's up tremendously over the past week. And it's basically because in anticipation of rate cuts and strengthening financials, people plow into these stocks because they're going to get a premium as the rate cuts happen and as that trickles down to the actual financials of the business. So really, SoFi is one of these stocks and it's going to see similar benefits. And there's a lot of other pieces here to love about SoFi. I mean, because it really feels for SoFi like a lot of things are converging at the same time and rate cuts is going to be the key to unlock a lot of the growth in the stock price, but also in the fundamental business. I mean, from a stock perspective, you have more institutions accumulating on the back end. Every single month, we're seeing more and more and more institutional holdings. We have some big names from hedge fund managers plowing into SoFi. We also have marketing ramping up for TGL. We have other leagues starting over the next several months. This is going to be the first year in a couple of months that SoFi is going to be advertising in both the NBA and the NFL and in January, the TGL as well for golf. And so that marketing is also going to lead to higher numbers of member counts. It's going to have a positive impact overall onto that ecosystem and that flywheel. We have big quarters coming up from a fundamental perspective because the main hurdle was Q2 and we crushed those numbers. And so going forward, it should be smoother sailing. And look, it's obviously difficult to hold names that are underperforming, especially because it seems as though you're fighting for those laggards. You're making excuses for them. But really, the thing that keeps me grounded is that every time I go back and revisit the numbers for SoFi, it puts me at ease because I know that the fundamental business is executing at a high level and everything is going according to plan. From a short term perspective, you get a lot of flack for holding these stocks, especially this channel that 
a lot of the content has been catered to SoFi exclusively. But over the long term, I think that's going to benefit not only my portfolio, but also this perception that SoFi is this broken company because they just need to get their footing on a fundamental basis. And it seems as though they are. And the market is still missing it. And for as long as the market keeps missing it, that's how big the opportunity area is. Because I guarantee you, we're going to come at a time where maybe it's next year, maybe it's next month, where SoFi hits the double digits. And then people are going to be saying, is it too late to buy or did they miss their opportunity to do so? And the fact of the matter is, in many cases, those are the same people who today are very negative and bearish on the stock. So right now, what I'm seeing for SoFi, even though there's not many news out there, I'm seeing that everything is really converging all on one singular vector. And that vector is rate cuts. Because once we get rate cuts, there's two massive catalysts for SoFi. Number one, from a stock perspective, all small caps are going to rise because the money market funds are going to plow into equities. And SoFi is going to cash a bid because it's a small cap and the market's going more risk on. But also from a fundamental perspective, because student loans and home loans are going to see massive tailwinds from the underlying financials. And the numbers are just going to look way better for SoFi, which is going to consistently lead to them beating their expectations. I think in the immediate short term, over the next month or so, there's going to be choppiness because we obviously have a lot of uncertainty still remaining with regards to the election, with regards to geopolitics, with regards to so many outstanding macroeconomic factors. But after we get through the election until the end of the year, I think it's going to be smooth sailing for SoFi. And we're going to start to see that downtrend starting to turn around. Keep in mind, it seems as though the year is up, but there's still four months left until the end of the year. And I think that those last couple of months are really going to be beneficial for SoFi, especially as we head into 2025. That's just one person's opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.